Hello, I'm Megan Otto. We are so glad that you are here and remind you that wherever you are in your spiritual journey, wherever you find yourself, you are welcome in this place. Today we continue our sermon series, Sundays at the Cinema, and Pastor Earl will be preaching. His sermon centers on the Pixar movie, Raya and the Last Dragon. Please join me in the call to worship. God of the prophets, call to us today. Call us in your ways of love, justice, and righteousness. God of the poets, remind us again how much you love us. Sing to us your ways of love, justice, and righteousness. God of the disciples, teach us how to follow you. Teach us your ways of love, justice, and righteousness. God of all creation, help us to know your ways. We gather to hear your call, to sing your praise, to teach each other, to pray and worship as the body of Christ. Friends, let's join in our first song, How Can I Keep From Singing?
Good morning. We have two scripture readings today, one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. From the Old Testament, our reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verses 1 through 5. When Abram was 99 years old, God appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. Our second reading comes from the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that God gave the only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. It was only after I moved from New York City to Austin last year that I realized I might have some trust issues. One day, I had to take my car to a mechanic, and this mechanic, he was too nice and unnecessarily friendly by my New York City standards. So I was quite suspicious about him and began to worry about getting ripped off. But it turned out he was a genuinely kind person. I remember Kevin Hart, a comedian once said the main reason he has trust issues is that when he was a kid, his mom gave him raisin cookies that just looked like chocolate chip cookies. I know it's funny, but sadly enough, isn't it so true that there are so many reasons, big and small, not to trust people? For sure, it's simpler not to trust others for whatever reasons than to trust them. And it is quicker to lose trust than to build it. But why? I wondered, why are trust issues so common? I think it's because of the nature of trust. Let's imagine that we are hiking along a trail with a guide. And there comes a hanging bridge, a very simple suspension bridge. And this bridge looks shaky and dangerous. So we get worried and ask the guide, is it safe? And the guide assures us, telling us how it was built, how sturdy it is, and how much weight it can bear, and so on. But that bridge still looks unsafe. Here, to cross the bridge, what we need is trust a trust in the guide and in the bridge. Our knowledge, experience, or judgment may help us shake off some fear, but in the end, it is trust that actually leads us to take the first, first step onto the bridge, even though it will make us vulnerable. So I want to say trust involves the commitment, the commitment to taking the first step and the willingness, the willingness to be vulnerable. But it is always hard for us to let go of control, to take that first step. And it is always easy for us to choose security over vulnerability. This is probably why all of us have trust issues to some degree. In the movie Raya and the Last Dragon, Raya also has serious trust issues. But I think no one can blame her for that. The movie is set in the imaginary land of Kumandra, which culturally looks like Southeast Asia. A long time ago, the land was protected by dragons whose power was built on trust and harmony. And there is the Drun, the evil power grew out of human discord. 
and this evil power ravaged the land by turning people into stone. To defeat this drone, the dragons created a gem by sacrificing themselves. And they entrusted this gem to Shisu, the last dragon, so she could vanquish the drone and revive the people. But unfortunately, the dragon gem became the center of the conflict because people wanted that power. They fought against each other and ended up being split into five tribes. 500 years later, Raya's father is a guardian of the dragon gem. He has this strong belief that the five tribes can be reunited. One day, he invites other, tri other tribe leaders to a feast, hoping that he may build relationship and trust with them. During the feast, Raya becomes friends with Namari, a princess of another tribe. Trusting Namari, Raya brings her to a secret chamber where the dragon gem is kept. But right there, Namari betrays Raya. And she signals her tribe soldiers to come and steal the gem. There begins another fight, and it breaks the dragon gem into five pieces. And what's worse is the gem's destruction unleashes the evil power of Druun again. The Druun turns Raya's father and her people into stones, while Raya and the leaders of other tribes take a piece of gem and flee away. I can totally sympathize with Raya. Everything is messed up. Her father's commitment to, to, to taking the first step to restore trust and her willingness to show the secret chamber to Namari their trust got shattered like the dragon gem, and Raya is now left alone in the broken land. I think we can sympathize with Raya even more today, especially as we see our own land fall apart. The land that is now often called the disunited States of America. This is one of the moments when an animated fiction gets too real, but we all know trust and broken trust is not only Raya's problem. Trust is in short supply in our land, where distrust and antagonism ravage people's hearts, where the pandemic has exposed and exacerbated the economic disparities and racial inequalities, and where the Supreme Court deepens division, even in the name of justice. Yes, in this land and at this time, again, we have so many reasons, big and small, not to trust people. Then. Is there any way we can rebuild trust and heal this broken land? Where can we start? This morning, we read Abraham's story and John 3.16, and both readings proclaim this truth. We have been trusted more than we can imagine. The book of Genesis begins with a story about trust. God creates humans and gives them freedom. Giving of freedom, isn't it an act of trust? But the earliest humans, of course, they also have their trust issues and fail God. Nevertheless, God takes the first step to rebuild trust. God makes a covenant with Abraham and his descendants. But we see in the Hebrew Bible, humans betray this trust over and over again. Nevertheless, God stays faithful to us 
and takes another step, step of trust towards us. The Gospel of John tells us God decides to entrust God's only Son to human hands. In the person of Jesus, God comes as a helpless baby. And on the cross, God reveals the commitment to our new life and the willingness to be vulnerable to the point of death. Truly, we have been trusted beyond and above our imagination. So, faithful friends in Christ, it is now our turn to build trust. For all of us, trust may not be an option to choose, but a call to live out. As entrusted with God's grace and love, we are on a mission to plant the seed of trust in this broken land of distrust and division. At the end of Raya and the Last Dragon, the Drun's evil power sweeps across the land, and Raya and her friends from different tribes, including Namari, can't really get out of it. Each of them holds a piece of dragon gem, and they need to put them together to defeat the drone. But they don't have enough time. And Raya's friends refuse to trust Namari, saying, After what she's done, we will never trust her. That moment, Raya says, Then let me take the first step. She hands over her piece of dragon gem to Namari and let herself turn into a stone. Then her friends one by one join Raya. And here comes Namari's moment of redemption. Namari realizes that she is trusted more than she can imagine. And she now puts the dragon gem together. And it is this power of trust that drives the drone away and revives and reunites people. I'm an immigrant in this country, and I've experienced how hard it is to build trust across racial, cultural, and language differences. But I am here thanks to many people of God who trusted me as I am. When I barely knew about the United Methodist Church, Tewksbury United Methodist Church in the Boston area embraced me and gave me the opportunity to serve as their pastoral intern. When I barely knew about how to lead a congregation, the people of First United Methodist Church of Montclair and Verona in New Jersey, they accepted me as, as their pastor and nurtured me with their mature love and trust. And last year, I moved to Austin knowing no one in this area. DS Laura Merrill and Pastor Teresa welcomed me and trusted me and I pray their trust continues. For sure, I have been trusted more than I can ever imagine. And as one who is trusted, it is my promise to build trust with you in this community and beyond. One conversation between Raya and Sisu resonates deeply in me. Where Raya says, yeah, well, the world is broken. You can't trust anyone. And Shizu responds, or maybe world is, world is broken because you don't trust anyone. There are countless reasons not to trust people in this broken land. And certainly there are abusive, hurtful, and toxic relationships we should refuse by all means. But along our life journeys, there may be some people, 
Some people we have neglected or we have been estranged from. There may be some people we don't know how to reach out to because they look different or speak differently. Or simply there may be some people that you just want to know more about. Today, God is calling each one of us to take the first step to those people, one step outside our comfort zone, and one step forward onto the bridge of relationships. As we live out this call and mend this broken land with trust, may the spirit of our faithful God be with all of us at all times. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Earl, for that word. Indeed, we are trusted more than we can imagine. And we remember that God loved the world and us so much that God gave and God continues to give of God's self to us. As ones created in the beloved image of God, we too seek to give of ourselves for the sake of love in the world. This day, you can continue to give to the ministries of University UMC by going to our website and finding the donate button. We are grateful for your generosity that enables us to continue to be a place of unconditional love and justice in action here in the heart of Austin. Friends, at this time, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. that God hears the cries of our hearts. This day, I lift up the prayers that you carry with you, 
maybe the names of loved ones or other situations that you are concerned about. We pray for members of our community who are living with health concerns or COVID or struggling with other medical complications. We lift them up to God and we seek healing. We also pray for our communities and for the world. Let us take all these things to God. May we pray. Loving God, you have reconciled us in Christ Jesus, and you have given us the ministry of reconciliation. We pray for all those from whom we feel estranged. Bring healing to strained or broken relationships. Forgive us for the times we have wronged others, whether by ignorance, neglect, or intention. Grant us the courage and the grace to seek their forgiveness and the opportunity to make amends. Where others have wronged us, O oh God, grant us a gracious spirit that we might forgive, even as we have been forgiven in Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Go now and build trust in this broken land. With your commitment and willingness, take your steps onto the bridge of relationships. And let us remember always that we have been trusted more than we can imagine. In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, and all God's people say, Amen. Thank you.